Praise God. <coughs> Father God, bless him a thousand times more. And Father, expand him, use him, enlarge his territory. I speak wisdom, 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 and wisdom. This year, God's going to bless us. God's going to use his servant to speak into us. And we're going to receive what the servant said, and then we're going to move on with what the servant said. In Jesus' name I pray, and all God's people say amen. Amen. Thank you, sir. I receive that. Thank you. Amen. Well, you just experienced a reverend sowing a seed to the pastor, to the priest of the house. I want to thank you for tuning in to Seeing the Impossible Faith Center. My name is Pastor Gregory Marilla. It is an honor and a privilege for me to speak into your life. I want to thank all the viewers for tuning in. And uh, this is uh, part two on discipleship in the Word of God. So those of you that are here, if you have your Bibles out and your journal out, write the aim of this teaching. It's called Discipleship in the Word of God. I know, I, I said first it was disciple, now he, he said, oh, no, no, it's not discipleship in the Word of God. Discipleship in the Word of God. As you are writing the aim, what I am going to do is go straight to the throne. Praise God. Lord, we thank you in the name of Jesus that the Holy Spirit is a teacher and you, Father God, has redeemed us from poverty sickness and spiritual death. Father God, you told us that the secret of success is to walk in line with your word and pray and listen to your spirit who is the Holy Spirit. Father God, I thank you for that word that you gave me, that word obedience. You said to me, obedience is the only thing that you require from us. You said to me in Isaiah 1.19, if we're willing and obedient, we will eat the good of the land. Amen. I thank you, Father, for setting us apart, consecrating us, making our heart pure. Father, giving us the spirit of discipline that will be devoted to you and your word. And I speak over your people that are watching, the viewers that are watching, and those that are here. I speak blessing, 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 Hallelujah. fruitfulness. And multiplication in Jesus' name and all God's people in this house and watching over there out there in the left. Can't just say amen. amen. Praise the Lord. Let's give God a hand. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Well, okay, good. Let's go straight to, let me do this here, let's go straight to uh, Matthew, let's go to Matthew, Matthew 28, praise God, let's go to Matthew 28, verse 19, we learn that Matthew 28, verse 19 is a mandate. Uh, it is called the Great Commission, and, and God has given us an instruction, and this is the instruction that God has given us. Praise the Lord. I'll give you, I'll give you some time to get there, you know. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory, glory. Glory, glory, glory. Glory, glory, glory. Thank you, God. Glory, glory, glory. Thank you, God. Mm -hmm. Glory, glory, glory. <clears throat> In Matthew 28, verse 19, uh, Jesus told us, Go, therefore, and make disciples Amen. of all nations. That means don't be prejudiced. Whom are you going to talk to about this gospel? Religion is prejudice. But those that have a relationship with Jesus Christ are not. Amen? Amen? Praise the Lord. So he says, go, therefore, make disciples 
of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. Okay? And then we went over uh, Sunday's teaching. We're going over it now a little bit. And he, he explained to me that this here, he wasn't telling us to go and make rebels. Uh, the word was goat. He didn't say go and make goats. What does a goat do? A goat kicks up. A goat eats any junk in the yard. If you want to get your yard clean, if you have a Sanford and Son yard and you want to get it clean, get a goat. He'll eat everything in the house. Rubber tire, he'll eat everything in the house. A goat eat anything. So a goat is a person that kicks up. Doesn't want to hear what the Lord is saying to them. He said, go make disciples because a disciple, write this down if you don't have it down already, a disciple is someone who's committed to learn. A disciple is a person who's committed to learn. Okay? A disciple, number one, is a person who's committed to learn. Number two, someone who's teachable. Yes, sir. If you're not, if you don't have a, a teachable spirit, you're not a disciple. You can't be kicking up. I'm thinking you know it all. Everyone must submit to the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Including the mouthpiece of the house. Especially the mouthpiece of the house. What do you think? If I don't submit to the Lord, can I hear from him? No. no. So, a disciple is a person who's committed to learn, who is teachable, and that person has a willing spirit to be disciplined. Okay? And we learned that in the Greek, disciple comes from the word discipline. To learn that. All right. So, we also learn that, this is good for the teachers that are in the house, okay? You, you can't make a person into a disciple. This is a key for you. Please, listen to me. You cannot, you can't make a person into a disciple unless you have the Lord's vision for making disciples. Now, I want you to say that to yourself. Has God given me the vision to make disciples? So don't try to school somebody if you're not called to teach. Amen. Praise the Lord. The prophet said, amen, real loud on that one. And if you're not called to teach, you have no business teaching. teaching. Praise the Lord. Amen. Okay, now, you hear that? That's true. Praise the Lord. That's right. So you have to have the vision and the grace. You hear me? You have to have the vision and the grace. Yes, yes, God is adding in pomegranate. God's adding on to it. You have to have favor to do that. You have to have favor. You have to say to yourself, am I called to teach? Am I called to make disciples? For who? For God. <laughs> I want, to get a little, I want to get a little more amen than that. Amen. 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 For who? Not for your interests, your personal interests. Not to make slaves. God. Not to have things your way. Not to take advantage of people. Amen. No. So how, how does one do that? I gave you principles, like four principles. You must capture the vision. You know, I've seen in ministry, and I'm going to talk to those out there, the viewers watching, I've seen in ministry people that are called to do work for the Lord, but they're not doing that work for God because they haven't captured the vision. So they're doing something else. Oh, 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 oh. oh I heard what you said out there listening to me and looking at me. Yeah, that person is not 
in order with God. Because that person is doing what they feel they're supposed to be doing. Amen. Now God called them to do something and, and they have to do it. And that's that. There's no buts, no what's, no getting out of it. If God called you to do it, turn to your neighbor, those who are in the house, and say, Father knows best. Father, Father knows best. best. Father knows best. Thank you. So one must capture the vision. I was talking to a son before service started, and the son explained something to me. He caught the vision. Yes. And he says, I ain't messing with that. Now, how in the past he would have messed with that situation? Because he didn't have the vision. Amen. Now he has the vision. He says, no, I don't belong there. Amen. I don't need to touch that. God didn't give me that. Come on, I'm talking to you. Girl. I'm, I'm teaching better than you shouting. Praise God. God didn't give me that. That's not mine to touch. I can't touch that. Amen. I have no business touching that. Praise the Lord. And we need yes. to do it. And then number two, number one is capture the vision. Hope you're writing that. Number two, embrace the vision. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See? Thank you, Lord. You capture the vision, then you embrace the vision. Now that you capture the vision and you embrace the vision, there's something else you need to do with the vision. You need to learn how to work the vision. I believe I'm in a place right now that I'm learning how to work the vision. Somebody say amen. amen. If you can, praise the Lord. See, And it's okay because everything is a, a process to a progress. A process to a progress. So once you learn to understand how to work the vision, then you come to a place of transformation. Right. Transformation into what? Into the likeness of the master. Amen. Now you start becoming like your Lord and Savior. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now you're walking with authority. Now you're walking with a sound mind. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Now you're walking with a vision. So now you start working your goal. Praise the Lord. Amen? Amen. Now who is the master? Everyone knows who the master is. I know at seeing the impossible faith center, you can shout to me, who's that master? His name is Jesus. Jesus. Praise the Lord. Christ Jesus. That's right. Christ Jesus is the master. Yes. I want to be like the high shepherd who was slaughtered like a sheep. Oh, come on, somebody. Glory. Praise the Lord. Glory. He knew how to follow his father's instruction, yeah. his father's command. Yes. That's why he was successful. Yes. But remember, the vision, oh, this is number four. Remember, this is very important to write this one down. Remember, remember, the vision will only work for you if is a God-given vision. <laughs> I love this, man. I love it. Amen. Dr. Perry, I love it. Praise the Lord. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Everybody say that with me. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank God for the wisdom of God. Amen. 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 This is not going to work if it's not a God-given vision. Amen. I'm just spinning my wheels here. What am I doing here? It's not God-given. <laughs> you know, and it may, may, perhaps it makes Pastor Greg feel good, but it's not God given. I don't have to do that. Come on, somebody, please. Yeah. Receive the Holy Spirit. Yeah. I, it makes me feel good, but it's not God given. Yes. But you don't understand how good I feel when I. But it's not God given. If it's not God given, it won't. It won't increase. It won't grow. Come on now. See. So sometimes you may have a perfect vehicle, but you have a flat. And if you have a flat, you're not going nowhere until you fix the flat. Once you fix the flat, you know there's a Holy Spirit. Once you fix the flat, now you can go. <laughs> now you can go, therefore, make disciples. Praise the Lord. And then go to all. Oh, nation, are you listening to me? And then baptize that nation in the name of the Father, in 
in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. So if you are part of this nation, I baptize you right now in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. You receive Hallelujah. And the best is yet to come. Amen. Now, you have to move yourself out of the position of being a goat. Mad and kicking everything. Everything gets near you. I know how to do that. Boom, I don't have a problem. Mad. And kicking, 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 kicking. You're a goat, baby. You're a goat. You need to be a sheep. A sheep knows his pastor's voice. And a sheep will follow his pastor. Yes, 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 yes. So, if you want to be like Jesus, and hear his voice. then you need to hear his voice. That's right. That's Amen. Amen. That's the key right there for you. Success, true success comes when you're able to hear the voice of Jesus. Amen. True success comes in your life when you're able to hear the voice of Jesus. Thank you, we have not experienced success <clears throat> if we have not heard the voice of the Master. Praise the Lord, somebody. Hallelujah. So, the conclusion here is this. Disciples are sheep and not goats. So what type of disciple am I? That's what you need to say. Am I a sheep? Or have I been acting like a goat? If I am full of myself, maybe I've been acting like a goat. Just yeah. eating anything that's in front of me. Trying to get satisfied and looking for love in all the wrong places. Not so good. They go, they get barbecue. And the goat get barbecue. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. For those of you that are watching out there, that's uh, that's Pastor Miriam. She needs to, to see the prayer ministry here, and she says the goats will get barbecue. Well, right. I, I believe I told you Sunday the goat will roast. The goat will roast. The sheep will go, and the goat will roast. Amen. Remember that. So. Jesus said, the sheep will go, uh -huh. and the goat will roast. <laughs> <laughs> She's enjoying herself in the spirit. Yeah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, let's praise him right now. He's here. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you. Praise you, God. We worship you, and we thank you for your presence. It is an honor. What a wonderful way to start the new year. Glory. With your presence. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Glory. Now we know that Jesus described his ministry to the multitude. Uh, write Luke 4, please. 18 and 19. Don't go there. Just write. And, I, and you go there on your own. Jesus described his ministry to the multitude. Why did he do that? He was training them to make them into disciples. Are you hearing me? Amen. That's the key. Why did God separate you from the rest? Because God is looking for a living billboard. God is looking for a mouthpiece that is not to, that is not afraid to say, Jesus is Lord. Amen. Come on, somebody. Now, the only way you're going to walk in that boldness, Luke chapter 4, 18, 19. The only way you're going to walk in that boldness, you have to let the Spirit of God disciple you so that you can be a, a fantastic disciple. Yes, Lord. The word I heard right now is, he says, don't say fantastic, say fabulous. 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 Somebody turn to your neighbor and say, I think this is fabulous. I think this is fabulous. Because Luke, Luke, 
Very good. That's right. I heard you say it. I heard you. That's right. Are you lost? Luke chapter 4, 18 and 19. You don't have to go there. We want you to go. He said this. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Amen. Look what Jesus said to the multitude. And what did Jesus say to the poor? Be poor no more. Jesus said, be poor no more. I'm the word. I'm the blessing. Hallelujah. I came to bless you. I came to give you life abundantly. Abundantly. I'm not the thief. The thief steals, kills, and destroys. Like John 10, 10, when you can't read it. John 10, 10 says, the thief came to steal, kill, and destroy. He says, I'm not the thief. Thank you, Lord. I am the Son of God, and the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. And he has anointed me, the Spirit of the Lord, praise God, to preach the gospel, to preach the gospel to the poor. He sent me to heal. Come on, somebody. He sent me to heal. So if there's sickness in the house, we haven't received the gospel. And then he says, he sent me to heal. Heal who? Ron, the broken heart. If you've had your heart broken, then you need to heal it to heal it. Praise God. Let the one that has received the spirit of the Lord, the one who is called the anointed one, heal you now in Jesus' name. And then he says, if you feel captive, if sometimes you think like you're in depression or oppression, if sometimes you if sometime you just let a trespasser come into your head. See, when you got wrong thoughts, that's a trespasser, the trespass. See, it is, and who knows where you pick up that hitchhiker. Maybe you went to a wrong place. Maybe you opened a door that you shouldn't open. Oh, I, I feel like preaching now. This is not teaching. This is preaching. I can preach. Say, preach, preach up. Preach, preach up. Preach, preach up. I can preach if I need to. He says, no. I came to proclaim, to proclaim liberty to the captain. Those that are in bondage, listen to me. Then he says, and if you can't see, don't worry. I came to bring recovery of sight to the blind. And I will set you apart. I will set those apart. Liberate those who are oppressed. You have no more excuses. No more excuses. He says, and I came. You know why I came? I came to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, especially for the viewers out there watching, 2013, you will receive it now. It is your year. Amen. It's your year of faith. <coughs> it's your year. It's the year that God is saying, this is the acceptable year for you. The system may be saying something else. I heard somebody say, well, what's going on in the world? Don't worry about the world. Don't worry about the Babylonian system. Don't worry about the Babylonian system. Either you walk by faith or you walk by sight. Amen. Amen. You just worry about the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is not a place like some people think. The kingdom of God is a system. So I'm here in the name of Jesus to articulate the system. Praise God. But not just any ordinary system. I'm talking about the system of God. Praise God. That's the system. Praise God. That's the system that sets us free. That's the system that makes us heal. Oh, yeah. It'll take a sick person to heal that person. I'm telling you. He's the Why are you talking like that? Go into the book of Hebrew. Why would he say he's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore? Why would he say that? His system hasn't changed. No matter who's telling you what. I don't know what system you're listening to. But he said he's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. This is proof to me 
that a disciple must have an ear to hear. Write that down. You must. Oh yes, Lord. You must. You must. Yes, Lord. How can I say it, Lord? You must learn how to work the art of hearing. You must have. You you must learn how to hear. You must learn how to hear. You must learn how to hear. That's what you're saying. You can't keep walking around life and not hearing. Hearing who? Your Father. Who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. You've got to hear what your daddy is trying to tell you. He wants to do some manifestation in your life. But he can't do it if you're not hearing. He's not going to bless a rebel. He's not going to bless a goat. He's going to bless his sheep. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now in John 17. Thank you, Lord. John 7. I love it. John 7. I love it. Thank you, Lord. John 17. Uh, verse 6, six, six through 7 and 8. 6, 7 and 8. Everything okay? Good. 6, 7 and 8. 6, 7 and 8. I need to go there myself. John 17, 6, 7 and 8. Wow, I love it. I heard. Read it out of the King James. That's what he told me. Yes, sir. He said, read it out of the King James. That's what he told me. Yes, sir. So John, oh, glory. Hallelujah. Oh, glory, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, glory, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Wow. John 17, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise. I ain't got no praise. I ain't got no praise. Hallelujah. I ain't got no praise. Glory. Yeah, and nobody's breathing in here. He says, everything that has breath, praise the Lord. Psalm 150. Don't get upset with me. Don't get upset with me. That's what the word says. Psalm 150 says, everything that has breath, praise the Lord. So if you're not praising God, maybe you're not breathing. Turn to your neighbor and poke them a little bit. Make sure they're breathing. Praise the Lord. <laughs> and if they're not, leave them there. Let's have faith. By uh, the end of this teaching, they'll be, they'll be alive again. <laughs> okay. John 17, 6. 7 and 8, and, and he goes on saying this, and 6, I have manifested thy name unto the man, unto, unto the man which thou givest me out of the world. Thy, thy, they were, thine they were, and thou givest them me, and they have kept my word. Okay, let's do it here. What is he trying to say to me? I have manifested your name to the man whom you have given me out of the world. Out of the world. Everybody that is here, those watching me on the internet, he has given you over to his son and he has taken you out of the world. And then he said, they were yours. You gave them to me and they have kept your word. Now here, this is proof that Jesus is describing actually his ministry to the 12 men. He's talking to the 12, he's talking to the disciples. Yeah. But he's telling them, the only reason why you are my disciple is because the Father has given you to me. Right. Amen. Oh, somebody Amen. praise the Lord. So you can't teach somebody who God has not given to you. That's right. Amen. Amen. Mm. Amen. You just can't. Amen. True. True. Yeah. Either God gave you that person yes. or he did. Yes. So sometimes we try to the problem. Sometimes we try to teach to someone who God has not given us authority to teach over. Yeah. And that per that, that person acts like a goat. Yeah. <laughs> 
if you see them doing this, be careful, they might be a goat. <laughs> or a true man food. <laughs> be careful. I'm talking to you. This, I know we got a little humor in it, and I know you might be laughing out there, but I'm telling you, this is the word of God. And then he went on saying, he said, he said this, he said in, in, in seven, and now they know all that, all the things that whatsoever thou hast given me are of thee. He says, look, I'm not doing anything on my own here. What you see me do, and I'm trying to disciple you into, I've been discipled into. My father discipled me. Hallelujah. Don't shut me down for teaching. Don't shut me down for teaching. Religion ain't going to teach you this. The spirit of God is because he wants to have a relationship with you. And he wants you with wisdom. Praise the Lord. He wants you to have understanding. Yes. And he wants you to live in a place of knowledge. Yes. Amen. He doesn't want you to be, write this down, Hosea 4, 6. My people perish for a lack of knowledge. Yes. God ain't talking about the people that don't know him. He's saying the people that know me are perishing. Because they lack knowledge. Yes. Now who's going to come and preach the gospel and teach the gospel to them? Praise the Lord. Thank you, Father. Yes. Who? Who's going to do that? I need somebody to do that. Amen. Could that be you? Praise the Lord. Amen. Could that be you? Praise the Lord. Amen. Okay, good. I want you to hear that. In fact, a disciple, please write this down, a disciple keeps God's word in their heart. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. I'll show you that. I'll show you right now. I'm not kidding. A disciple keeps God's word in their their heart. Praise the Lord. Amen. A disciple does that. A true disciple, that is. Yes. Praise God. A true disciple will do that. Thank you, Father. Yes, Amen. Yes, sir. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Father. David did. That's right. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, what he said, he said here, in John, let me see something here. Praise the Lord. Okay, I'll, I'll say it. Go to John 14. Two blocks over. John 14. Okay, that's a good way to, you know, to, to, to articulate this thing. 
I'm kicking up because I'm not hearing you in the spirit. See, I'm hearing you in the flesh. And you're giving me instruction that I have never done before. And guess what? It makes me feel uncomfortable. Because all this time, I've been my own man, and now you want to come and tell me that this is what the Lord says. Well, for you to be able to hear from the Lord, you have to be trained to hear from the Lord. So you start like an apprentice, an apprentice, and then you'll end up as a mechanic. Get it? Amen. Now, we understand that in the secular world, but we don't understand that in the kingdom of God. So you get a young buck. Can I say young buck? Yeah. You get a young buck. He's got two, Dr. Barry, he's got two or three scriptures under his belt, and now he feels he's a pastor. <laughs> <laughs> Come pastor here, you walk. If you don't, yeah. just burn your shoes off. You know, this is not, or oh, I can teach. I want to tell everybody in my family. No. You have to go through the process to understand the progress. Yeah. Yeah. Well, look into the word he's saying. Process to understand the progress. Yes. If you don't understand the progress, it's because you haven't gone through the process. Amen. Now, in verse 8, he says, For I have given to them the words which you have given to me. You see, Jesus discipled them how his father discipled him. Amen. Amen. See, if I'm discipling you in another way that is not the way Jesus said, we need to be disciple, then you need to get your blood out and out of here right now. Amen. Yes, Lord. That's true. Praise the Lord, somebody. Yeah. Give me three hallelujah. 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 You don't need anybody taking you to hell. You go to hell by yourself. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So he said, he said, look, he said to the father, look, I'm doing to, I'm, I'm, I'm mentoring these men the way you mentored me. What you told me and I've seen you done, I'm doing. Amen. Amen. And they have received them. Amen. Amen. See, the season of the disciple received them. That's right. Thank you. They received them. Yeah. They, oh my God, praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Glory to God. They knew that what they were teaching in the healing school Sunday was coming from God. Somebody praise the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> so they received them and got healed. Praise God. Amen. And they have received them and have known surely that I came forth from you. And they have believed that you sent me. Amen. For you to become a disciple, you must, uh, you must receive and believe. Yes. If you're a person that can't receive and believe, then you'll never become a disciple. Amen. You'll never be a sheep for God. You will always be the goat of the house. Yes. Now, I don't know about you, but it gets tiring of being the goat. Amen. Yes. Oh, God, thank you, Jesus. It gets very much tiring being a goat. Yes. Amen? Amen. Yes. So, we are learning here that Jesus did not try to disciple everyone. Please write that down, because a lot of you here, and, and I feel those that are watching me right now in this uh, uh, video, wherever you're at, I, I feel that there are viewers watching me right now that are called to do the work of God, and, uh, and or maybe in your circular work or circ uh, circular job, uh, you, 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 you're a leader, and you need to get this revelation that God's trying to say. He says, Jesus did not try to disciple everyone. He only trained those whom the Father gave them. Okay? So if the Father did not give you that person, you can't train that person. Good teaching class? Amen. Okay. So that's why, that's why, that's why, oh, thank you, Lord. I wish they were here. That's why you heard me. I think, I think it was so strong he told me that all of you heard it. I wish they were here. That's why he poured his life into those his father gave him. Yes. Uh, yes. Right yes. So you need to say, uh, school teachers watching me, you need to say, did God give me this child? Is this my child? If a child is giving you a hard time in the system, 
perhaps that child has a spirit of a goat and it's kicking up. So you, here you are, child, here you pulling your hair, if you got hair. <laughs> here you are pulling your hair. You're trying to disciple and mentor and train and teach a, a child or a grown-up that has a spirit of a goat. A spirit that is kicking up. Well, I don't know. Where does the Bible say that? Well, man, let me give you that. Because, you know, you, you can't believe it. Okay, go to Matthew 25, verse 32. Praise the Lord, somebody. Yeah. Praise the Lord, somebody. Praise the Lord, somebody. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So you have to evaluate that. Is this person, am I supposed to, okay, first of all, when somebody is put in front of your life, let me tell you something. I need to be real sincere here. I'm teaching this stuff, but I'm learning I know that made no sense. It doesn't. I haven't. But I know I didn't, I didn't articulate it right. I am learning what I am teaching. Amen. Amen. I am learning what I am teaching. Amen. I'm going to quote the Apostle Paul. In the book of Philippians, Apostle Paul says, I don't say that I have arrived. I don't even say that I have apprehended. But one thing I know, I forget those things that are behind me, and I press and reach to my high calling. That's all we're doing. We're pressing and reaching. What qualifies you to press and reach, Ron? you got to forget those things that are behind you. You can't stay stuck. You'll never be able to go to, into tomorrow if you're living in yesterday. Amen. I'll say that again. You will never be able to go into tomorrow if you're a person living yesterday. Amen. Yesterday. You're so far away. <laughs> Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Well, in Matthew 25, 32, which I know you're there, says this. All the nation will be gathered before him, God. And he will separate them one from another as a shepherd divides his sheep from the goats. Praise the Lord. So don't tell me this ain't biblical. Don't tell me this ain't biblical. <laughs> You've been acting like a goat and you don't want to know about it. You, you, you don't even like when I'm telling you that you're acting like a goat. I didn't say you look like a goat. I said you've been acting like a goat. And if you look like a goat, then trim your goat teeth like I do, please. <laughs> it looks nice and you can just trim it. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. 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 Praise the Lord. So, Dr. Barry, Jesus poured himself into the twelve. Yes. Now remember, now here goes the, here goes the principle I've been teaching uh, some of us here, the core, the congregation, and the crowd. Now remember, Jesus had a core. His core, everybody's listening? Yep. His core was the twelve. Right. That was his core, twelve. And then the 77 was the congregation. And then there was more. Remember, he fed the multitude of 4,000 and 5,000? Those were crowds. They were crowds. Yeah, and he, he, felt, he felt compassion. I'm going to with this. He felt compassion. Write this down. This is the revelation for you. Please pay attention. Compassion is a person. Compassion, when you feel compassion, you feel a person. That's right. You feel the person who is the Holy Spirit. You can't have compassion unless you have the Spirit of God in you. I'm talking about true compassion. Praise the Lord. I heard you, Dr. Perry. That's right. You're very wicked. That's right. That's right. Praise the Lord. That's right. That's the Holy Spirit there. Holy Spirit here. He's, a, he's the same. He's in the same place. Compassion. Jesus had compassion. You know what he said? 
They're hungry. Well, he told the disciples, well, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You get in it? He, he didn't. He told them, he turned to the disciples. He turned, he turned to the core. And he says, what are you going to do for these people? They're hungry. Amen. Mm. Mm -hmm. Amen. He said, what are you going to do for these people? They're hungry. Jesus said, watch what I'm going to do for these people. <laughs> <laughs> he said, what are you going to do? Uh -huh. You feed them. You've been, I've been training you. Yes. Pastor, that's, that's what you're doing. Yes. You're thank you, Jesus. Yes, thank you. I receive it. I receive it in the name of Jesus. Amen. That viewer right now, that pastor right now, this is what God is telling me to tell you. Amen. Tell your people, what are you going to do for God's ministry? Amen. Amen. All right. All right. What are you going to do for God's ministry? Thank you, Lord. I hear you, Lord. If I grow it, he'll buy it. Hallelujah. In other words, he said, if I grow it, that was my language. Because he speaks to me the same way I, I understand. He's, he speaks to me with a Bronx accent from New York. <laughs> he said, if you grow it, I'll prosper it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But it's got to be a God-given vision. Yes. It's got to be a God-given vision. What are you going to do with this vision? I said, I see people getting healed in this vision. I see people getting fed in this vision. I see people becoming disciples for you in this vision. And then he said, grow it, and I will prosper it. Praise the Lord. And I put you here for such a time as this. I put you here. I put you here for such a time as this. And those that are supposed to come, I've put you here for such a time as this. This Hallelujah. is the acceptable year of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Lord, 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 Lord. <coughs> Hallelujah. And then he said, go to John 7, because my time is getting short. Go to John 17, verse 18. Watch this. Watch this. Oh, praise you, Lord. Oh, praise you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Oh, praise you, Father. Oh, praise you, Father. Oh, praise you, Father. I hear you. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, man. Here we go again. John 17. Thank you, my God. Thank you, my God. John 17. 18. Amen. 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 Lord. Amen. You get it? Good. You get it? Yes. Good. You there? You get it? You ask, is this child mine? Did you give me this child for me to decide for this child? That's the only way you can teach. Close your eyes right now and extend your hand to me. Extend your hand to me. No, this way, this way. Extend your hand to me right now. In the name of Jesus. I know you feel it because it's coming out of this pulpit. This is the ark of God. In the name of Jesus, you are not going to fail anymore. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Every child that God puts in front of you, you will succeed with your assignment. Because that child will be a God given vision to you. Say, I receive it. I receive it. I believe it. I believe it. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Heat in your hand. Praise God. Because I feel the heat coming out. Hallelujah. I feel the heat coming out. So in John 17. Verse 18, this is what he said. You there? Yes. As, thou, as thou hast sent me, Jesus is talking, into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. That's right. That's good. Thank you, Mother. Everybody say this. Me. 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 Say me. me. He sent me into the world. Me. You are doing the work of Jesus in this world. That's why he's training you as a disciple. Hold on, we're going to write a couple more. I need ten more minutes. We're going to write, we're going to write some things God gave me, and I'm going to prove it to you right now. Number one, four things we're going to write. Get ready to write. Number one, he sent you to do what? He sent you to preach the gospel. That's number one. 
to preach the gospel and heal the sick. Listen to your mandate. According to John 17, 18, please. And I still hear people in the airway arguing. They're, they're, you're under a curse. Please renounce the curse. Tell God that you want to renounce the curse. You can't rebuke the curse. You have to renounce the curse. Because you're talking about yourself. Renounce the curse. Give up the curse. Praise the Lord. Say, I, I reverse this curse. I will receive it no more. So according to John 17, 18, he called you to preach the gospel and heal the sick. Then number two. Number two. Thank you. Number two. Thank you. Number two. You ready for number two? Okay, good. Then number two, he said this. I've called you to reveal the character and the love of the Father. Oh, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. So if we are in ministry, if we are in ministry, because everybody is in ministry, you don't have to have a collar, or you don't have to be ordained. You don't have to be, have a license. Amen. It's inside of you, the ordination. Before the world was ever made, God called you and separated you for such a time as this. Praise the Lord. Amen. So if here you are trying to help somebody, and you're getting upset. You want to punch that person in the nose? You're not revealing the character and the love of the Father. Amen. You can't do it. That's not the way Jesus works. Okay, number three. Don't get mad with me. Just say, thank you, Jesus. God's trying to get you blessed. He can't, get, he can't get you blessed if you're under a spirit of anger. Or, this is what I heard right now. Ooh, Jesus, I don't even like this one. I, I, this one now, I rebuke in the name of Jesus. A spirit of offense. He offended me. She offended me. And that's why I feel this way. Get rid of it. It brings strife. It brings sickness and disease. It opens the door to diseases. Are you listening to me, family? Does they ever say to me? I got their ears now out there. I feel it in the spirit. So, number two, to reveal the character and the love of the Father. Number three, number three, to convince other of the divinity of Jesus. The power of Christ. Number four, when you're ready, you let me know and I'll say it. Okay? Number one. Everybody got number one? Okay, number two. Everybody got number two? Good. Number three. Do you need number three? Okay, number three. To convince others of the divinity of Jesus. And how do you do that, Adam? Walking in love. Yeah. You don't get ticked off on this opinion. Mm -hmm. I just told my wife that today, in fact, oh my God. Uh, I started evangelizing on the internet. I've never done that before. I never. <laughs> Please, I got I love to do it. He said, I want you to go. I want them to hear my voice through you. So I'm already getting people asking me things that I say, oh my God, they need a pastor. Mm -hmm. Now these are Christians. Yes. Amen. Are you hearing me? Amen. Amen. Hosea 4, 6. My people perish for a lack of knowledge. Amen. And then because there have been so many bad apples out there, Adam, they feel like if you say something they're not used to hearing, yep. they think you're trying to manipulate them into something that is not right. Listen, Amen. the Spirit bear witness with the Spirit. That's right. Okay, number three, to convince others of the divinity of Jesus. Number four, please. Number four. To the 
disciple people in their personal relationship with God and His Word. Wow! Thank you, Jesus. To disciple people in their re personal relationship. See, it's a relationship, folks. It's not a religion. I'm not, I don't want to say anything. I'm on the air, so I don't want to say that. Don't you ask me where's the confession box here. I'm going to send you to the... To disciple people in their personal relationship with God and His Word. And please, I'm not here to offend anybody or anybody's belief. Confess your sin to God. Amen. Speak to God. I promise you, he won't make fun of you. He won't make you feel insignificant. Oh my God, this must be the Holy Spirit. Amen. I'm telling you, he won't make you feel less of a person. He'll love on you. Don't you understand that the Father wants a relationship with us? His Son has proved that He sent it. He sent His Son, His only begotten Son, that whosoever, whosoever, whosoever believe shall have eternal life. Amen. My friend, from dust you came and dust you will return. Look, your body. Yes, God has called you to take care of this chariot. God's called you to do it. Take care of your chariot. But honor your spirit. So, what we do with that? We disciples other. We disciple other in their relationship with the Lord. Wow. Thank you, Father. That's a tremendous revelation. That's God. I'm learning this. Okay, I don't get personal. I don't get upset. I don't want to do a, a, a three stooges on No, no, <laughs> let them go. Listen, this is what the word says. Okay? I am called to minister to you in the power of the Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus. I've been ordained by God to do this. I'm supposed to preach the word. Teach the word and decree healing. Yes. And let healing come to you. Alright? Alright, now we're going to do it. Those of you watching on the air, I want to thank you so much for tuning in. Remember, if you don't have him as Lord, I'll give you an opportunity to pray. But come in right now. Say, Father God, in the name of the Son Jesus, I believe Jesus died on the cross for me. To give me eternal life. So, you say that prayer. If there's something missing in your life, why don't you try to build a relationship with the Most High? Yes. Read John 3.16. God bless you. I hope to see you soon. Bye-bye.